Hey, my friends, welcome to this week's moment with Miranda. I am so glad that you have chosen to take this moment with me today. So welcome on in. Do you remember playing the game Jenga whenever you're, you were younger? Maybe you're familiar with it. You know, it was one where you begin with this tall wooden pillar that's made up of individual wooden blocks and they're stacked on top of one another. And each person takes a turn and they begin to remove pieces of those wood, wood blocks. And every time they remove a piece, they stick it back on top. And all of a sudden, as you continue to play the game, you begin to see these voids and these cracks in the structure that begin to make themselves evident. It begins to be perched very precariously. It starts to lean because pieces of that wood have been removed and placed in different positions. And the further away from the original pattern of the game of Jenga that you get, the more likely it is that the structure will fall. It will fall into pieces and eventually it will fail. You see, there's a pattern to building anything, and that pattern is what's used to make a structure stable. Any good builder will run tests on their building to prove the structural integrity of that building because at the end of the day, the purpose of a building is not to, just to be the shrine of brilliance to the builder, but the purpose of a building is so that it would actually be inhabited, so that it would be a place where life would happen. And each piece of a building is laid according to the pattern that the builder has set out and the measure of the builder. And it's not simply for the purpose and the use of each individual piece, but it's for the benefit of the whole. Because the builder sees in his mind what he intends the building to look like and to be used as from the very beginning. And it is of the greatest importance to the builder of any structure, to him and to his name, that the structure stands with strength and with beauty. And friends, this is God's desire for his church, for you and I, as the individual believers that make up the building of God, that we are built according to the pattern that God has laid out. And it's a holy house where he is pleased to live in and to dwell among. And in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3, we read where the Apostle Paul says, don't you know that you are the temple of God and the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God dwells within you? If any man destroys the temple of God, him, God will destroy. I mean, that's kind of a scary thing, isn't it? It says that for the temple of God is holy, whose temple you are. And it's necessary that what God is building with us, with our lives, is able to stand. That we're not just living lives for ourselves and for our own personal benefit, but we are living to be the lively dwelling place where the very presence and the majesty of a holy God will reside through a habitation of his spirit. We are created to live for his presence, to live for his glory, and ultimately to live for the fame of the name of Jesus Christ. And just like the pieces of the game of Jenga, over time, pieces of of our churches, of our lives can be removed and reshuffled according to man's estimation or man's opinion. But at the end of the day, friends, anything that is not built according to what God has ordained through his word and by his spirit is going to find itself in a pile of rubble on the ground. And friends, if you haven't seen it over the last year or so, I believe it's quite evident that there is a restructuring of the true church of Jesus Christ in the days that we're living. That which has been built on man's tradition and on man's opinion is being shaken. And there's this call going forth for a restructuring of the building and a return to the pattern that God 
designed and intended for us to look like, to be the building that he is pleased to live in and to dwell among. And you know what? If you want to be a part of that building, that holy habitation set up to be dwelt in by the God of heaven, then this moment is for you tonight. So welcome to Moment with Miranda. Welcome into the house of a delighted father. He is pleased for you to come and dwell with him. And he wants to dwell with you. And he has taken the responsibility to make us and to structure us according to the pattern that he sees. He is for you. He is for your success. He has called you. He has chosen you. And he knows how to make you more like him. Friends, these are the moments where we believe it, we speak it, and we see it. We believe what God says about us through his word. We speak that word over our lives, and we see our lives transformed into the image of his son from glory to glory as we behold him. So welcome again to this week's moment with Miranda. I'm so glad that you're taking a look at restructuring today. You know, I've been a part of many teams that have gone to build churches in Honduras. And every time we've gone, the the leaders of the teams have gone with a specific pattern of a church in mind. They have discovered what works and what doesn't according to money, according to time, according to the abilities of the people there and of the team. You know, there is a pattern that was set out specifically to be followed because it was one that they found worked through time, through effort, through trial and error, and and from access to certain materials. And it all works together so that at the end of the trip, the congregation has a building to worship in, and the whole mission is successful. Things get done like it's supposed to get done. And each time, the pattern is set down beforehand along with monies necessary for them to get started on the building so that when we from the states come, we're able to do our part. And so things can be done in that orderly and timely fashion where ultimately this habitation can be made for the glory of God. And it really depends on each team building according to the pattern that has been set out. And most of the time, the local congregations do really well with this. They're just excited to have a church. But there have been times when that pattern that has been sent out has not been followed. They thought, well, we'll cut a corner here, or why would we do it that way? They have changed things according to their own estimation or what they think, maybe to stretch the materials. And there was one such time where I know that this happened because I was a part of the team and the people didn't follow through with the pattern that had been sent down. So when we as a team came down to finish, to put the roof on and to bring down the rest of the money that had already been calculated for the project, we got there and the building was wrong. The measurements that we had wouldn't work. And so the entire thing had to be reworked and re- remeasured and it took extra time and it took extra money that if they would have just followed the pattern, we wouldn't have had that extra hassle or that extra struggle that we had to deal with. Because at the end of the day, it wasn't just important that the structure look good, but most importantly, that the structure would stand through time no matter what came against it. And friends, as the church, it is a dangerous place for you and I to be so concerned with a certain look or following the patterns of the past or cutting corners according to the measure of a man that we spend this lifetime building according to another standard rather than what what has been set out for us to build. And it's dangerous because we run this risk of building a building which will fall entirely or building a structure that has been built with a twist or with a bent that is not how God created and designed for it to work and it only becomes partially useful and this is not God's heart for his building and for you and I at all 
I wonder, you know, if we really understand that God, the God of heaven is so pleased to dwell among us, to dwell in us. Friends, that blows my mind that the God that cannot be contained in the buildings made by man's hand has chosen to place his spirit within you and I as people. He has chosen for us to be his habitation where he has put his name to live and to be his representatives on the earth. And friends, that is awesome. And it's terrible. It's it's terrible terribly awesome and I am humbled by that very thought because God is holy and he's high and he's exalted and he's lifted he's God alone and yet he's chosen to draw near to the hearts of men and to come into communion and to dwell and to live with us he says I want you I love you and I want to make you what I want you to be just follow my pattern. Like, wow, mind blown right there that God would do that. And friends, please hear me that this message today is not a turn or burn message, but rather it's a message that says, don't you know that you are the temple of the holy God, that you are valuable that you are sacred, that you are set apart for habitation by the God of the universe. You're holy. You're holy because he called you holy. And I can see this in the scripture that Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, where he's been addressing these Corinthian believers. Corinthian believers and just like a true father he's beginning to share with them some of the deviations that he sees calling out other gospels that they are attending to or listening to and in this case he's calling out the fact that they're allowing the measure of the world the measure of man's wisdom to be their pattern on which they're structuring their belief in their lives and their lives and he says i want to talk to you as spiritual because that is who you were created to be you're intended to know and to hear and to receive the spirit of god and the truth of his words but he said i can't because you're still children you're proud of your structure you're proud of where you came from and you're allowing man's measure to divide you from what God has set forth as his pattern and his measure and his truth. And you're trying to build the wrong way. And this is what that looked like in the church. It looked like envy and it looked like jealousy and it looked like division and it looked like strife. It looked like I'm from Paul, and while well, Apollos was the one who got me saved, or Cephas, I follow him. You know, friends, we hear these words about division and envy and strife, and unfortunately, they are so familiar within the body of Christ that we make excuses for them, that this is just how, this is how church is, and we have our little divisions, and these people leave. We've made excuses, but I wonder, do we really know? know the influence that we are under when we operate in these things in allowing these influences to continue to stand Paul tells us in the book of Galatians chapter 5 he calls them the works of the flesh and you know what he they're named with the worst of the sins he calls it adultery sexual sin uncleanliness witchcraft idol worship hatred strife, division, envy, and more and more. And he says, and those who do these things, do not be unwise. They will not inherit the kingdom of God. Whoa, whoa, this should bring up our radar and say, wait a minute. I have to see if I'm seeing this operating in the temple of God, in my temple personally, what influence am I under right now? This is the enemy's influence and the temple of God cannot allow a pagan idol to be set up in the midst of the courts of a holy God. 
these things, friends, don't fit the pattern. And yet, this is how many of us have become comfortable operating within the church. And friends, we forget we're holy. We forget that we're set apart and we are called to so much more and empowered by the Spirit of God that resides within us to live more. So Paul calls him out and he says, guys, it's time to restructure. There's some restructuring that has to happen. And he started with the foundation. He said, remember who it's always been about from the beginning. It's been about Jesus. There's no other foundation that can be laid. The place of his habitation, the place where he has chosen to put his name, it has never, hear me, it has never been about a man or denomination or a personal opinion or a name or a ministry or a personal kingdom. It if you and I build on these things, they will fall because they cannot stand in the presence of a holy God. They cannot stand the winds of change. They cannot stand when everything is being shaken. The structure of these things will fall. And if you build with the materials that these things require, things that look like division and strife and envy, and endless personal agenda pushing, and outward behavior modification, the structure is going to be twisted, and it's going to have a mar, and it's not going to be able to fulfill its intended purpose. Friends, it's going to burn up in the fire of the holiness of God because it's not built on the purity of the pattern that the God of heaven set out for his temple. Holiness. Hear me, friends. Remember, don't you know who you are? You are the temple of a holy God. The holy God. Precious. And friends, we can see if we look at the Old Testament how much of it is dominated by the building of a tabernacle in the wilderness. It's dominated by the building of the temple. We see chapter after chapter where we read the materials of the temple, where we read about the pattern, how it's supposed to look, the measurements. If you've read any of those chapters, maybe you're like me and you're like, ah, you just like skim over it because you think, why do I have to read this same thing over and over again? But Friends, there has to be a reason why God put those things in there. He doesn't just write to write. Why would God spend so much time on something if it didn't have some example for you and I today? See, friends, this temple, this tabernacle was going to be the place where Israel would meet with God where he would be pleased to dwell and pleased to set himself up as their God and to draw them into his presence and call them his people. And there had to be a structure. There had to be an approach because he was holy, because he was holy and he still is holy. There had to be this place, this pattern, and he wanted to give it to them because he loved them and he wanted them to be with him. And he wanted them to dwell with him. This was not about some narcissistic deity demanding these people to give obeisance to him un unquestioningly. It was about a holy and a loving God who wanted a family, who wanted people to come into fellowship. And it was about him setting a pattern and making a way for them to be able to share in it. It's awesome. It's terribly awesome. It's so amazing. And friends, this is what he desires for us. And I was reading in the book of Ezekiel chapter 43 the other day, and it got my attention because in my Bible over the heading, it said, God's glory fills the temple again. 
And here Ezekiel, this prophet that is called to these people who are not going to listen. They won't listen to God, so they're not going to listen to him. This prophet that is called to these people, he has this encounter again with the glory of God. And God begins to speak to him and he says, son of man. He said, the place of my throne and the place of the soles of my feet where I dwell in the midst of the children of Israel forever. And my holy name shall the house of Israel no more defile, not by their adulterous worship of other gods or by their honoring of the relics of the kings who have died. They put their idols right next to mine with only a wall between them. They have defiled my holy name. Ouch. Like these are some terribly, terribly strong words. Whenever you hear these things, you know, in God's temple, they made idols out of their past. They made idols. They took idols out of present pagan worship. They got in bed with to the, those idols, so to speak, and they set them up up in the very temple of God and they put them in a place just as important to God and God was like no way you're not going to defile my holy place anymore so you might ask like how does this look in the temple of God today how does this look in us today Friends, it looks like us building a structure to God out of what's comfortable to us. Our rights, our personal preferences, our wants, building according to other people's opinions or their personal estimation of things or their own convictions. It looks like us building on what man has taught and man has dictated and desired rather than setting God on high and putting his pattern at the forefront according to his word. You know, friends, I see this and I'm sure that you can hear the passion in my voice and see the truth of it in my face because I lived this. That's why it's so near and dear to my heart. You know, and it was wasting me building according to others' estimation. I was built with a division in my personal structure, in my personal integrity. And there was this twist that was made after a religious design. And having lived like that, I don't want anybody else to live that way. I want the church to be free to grow as God intended according to the pattern that he built holy and acceptable and for him and him alone and friends there's good news to this because God wants that too and he made the way for that to happen he made the way through Jesus and he tells them in the book of Ezekiel he said Ezekiel Tell them to stop worshiping their gods and the relics of the kings of the past, and I'll live among them forever. I will be their God. And then he said this. He said, show them the house, the true temple, the pattern of his house. Show them the house. Show the house to the house of Israel that they would see their structure don't line up here. There's something that's twisted right here. That they would see their sin and let them measure by that pattern. It was time to restructure the house. To restructure the temple. Friends, the Apostle Paul tells us what that pattern was to look like. He told us what to follow. He said, there is no other foundation that can be laid but Jesus Christ. You build from him. There is nothing else. There is no other name. There is no other name given under heaven whereby men must be saved but the name of Jesus Christ. He is the foundation. He is the cornerstone. He is what will keep the structure straight and right.
He said, we don't build on man's wisdom. We don't glory in people. They are just people. What do they have that you also do not have? You also have the Holy Spirit. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. It's not about a person's name or a ministry or a denomination or their opinion or their method then or their method now. All of the relics of the past and all of the pagan worship of the present it's not about those. All things are yours and you are Christ's and Christ is God's. Build according to him. Don't you know that you are the temple of God and you are being built up according to the stature of the measure of the fullness of Christ. In him, all of the fullness of God dwells. Don't you know who you are? Don't you know you are the temple of the holy God? So friends, in this moment today, it's restructuring time. This is a call. I'm giving you a call out to look to the pattern again. We are a holy temple. We are the building of God. Our foundation is Jesus. It's him. It has always been. It will always be. He is the only structure that will ever stand the test of time and only his word will endure forever. And the ways that we build with, that we build upon, what we build upon that structure are his ways. It's his righteousness. It's his peace. It's his love. It's the fruit of his spirit evidenced in patience and in kindness and in self-control and in purity and in passion and in brotherly love and in forgiveness and in edification and speaking to one another the truth in love. It's humility. It's integrity. These are the buildings. These are the things that we build, the good works that he has ordained for us to do. All that he is, friends. This is the temple that looks like the temple of God, the temple that God is pleased to dwell in and to live among, the place where he puts himself, he seats, he's seated himself in authority and placed his feet of dominion on that house. And this is the place where you and I receive the power of that dominion. And we are empowered to walk as his ambassadors into the world. And we shine forth the glory of his holiness and his power and his purity into the world around us. Living stones, shining forth his light, holding forth the word of truth, his unchangeable and unfailing word and shaped and structured into the nature of Christ. That is who you and I were created to look like. You are the temple of the Holy God. It's time to restructure. Father, I thank you for this very powerful word that you are calling us to as your body and as your church. God, shape us restructure, tear down what is not of you. We come out of agreement with every lie that has been spoken with every false opinion and idea and ideal of man. We throw them aside. We cast them as nothing, God. We invite you in the fire of your, your holiness to come and to consume that which is not of you so that we can shine forth that which is of you brighter and brighter as we see the day approaching, Father. Do your work in us. You're pleased to. Lord, I'm not afraid to come before you and say, here am I. I'm not afraid because your perfect love casts out fear. And I want to be holy. I want to live in purity and righteousness and in your truth. And that is your desire for me and your body as well. It's what you've always called us to, and it's your responsibility, God, that you take on yourself 
to do it. So we present ourselves to you, Father. And I thank you for doing your work today. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, thank you so much for joining me for this moment with Miranda. It's restructuring time. This is a place where we believe what God says, where we speak his word over our lives and we see that we are changed into his image from glory to glory as we behold his face. Remember as always that God loves you so very much and so do I. I hope that you'll join me again next time for another moment with Miranda. God bless you.